let's continue on with chapter 13 and cover the 13-2 measuring and analyzing profitability ratios. We had talked about in 13.1 that there were four types or groupings of analysis we could do. Uh, financial strength, which was last section, profitability, this section, efficiency, will, and market will be covered in the next section of chapter 13. And just as a reminder, whenever we analyze something, do analysis, we first have to calculate then we need to set some sort of target or standard which we're trying to meet. And then third, lay out what our action is that we might want to do. So the next grouping then that we're going to talk about is profitability analysis. And the amount of your profit obviously matters a lot to people. But the consistency is a big deal to a lot of investors, too. So I don't want it to be that one year you have earnings and the next five you don't and just be content with that year of earnings. I want it to happen year after year after year. And I think we've talked about this many times in Accounting One. The earnings of a business have to be satisfactory to continue operations, which is the going concern concept that we think that they will be good enough to go time and time again. But who really cares about profitability? The answer is pretty much everyone. So managers care a lot, and we'll talk which ratios matter to them. Owners do, um, creditors do. So there's a lot of different people that care about profitability. So we will talk about five of them. So the first one, and again, I'd use my black line masters for notes in all of these. The first one we're going to talk about then is the gross margin. And this is the ratio between the money earned to the investment, and that's called return on investment. And that's a really generic. There's other ROI calculations. Um, but the one that we're going to look at here is gross margin. So. Um, the gross profit as a percent of sales, so gross profit divided by net sales is obviously what that's going to be. And again, that second bullet was just kind of talking about or indicating what I meant as it related to, uh, depending on the type of investment, we have different return on investment kind of calculations. So let's keep going with gross margin. So again, as gross profit divided by net sales and so because of these two factors being involved that's why you know that it comes from the income statement so it's related to profit and for instance this very top one of 39.5 percent what that really means is that for every dollar of sales that this company has they're earning 39 and a half cents on the dollar um, so therefore if we know that gross margin is sales minus cost of merchandise sold, we know that cost of merchandise sold is 60.5 cents uh, for this business that year. So gross margin is really an important measure, um, especially for managers, because it's looking at the product cost, really, and how we're doing related to that. Because whatever gross margin I have, you need to recall, has to cover my operating expenses, my other revenue and expenses, my taxes, and whatever profit I'm hoping to get. So that gross margin needs to be large enough for that. Um, we can obviously improve this one by increasing sales at a faster rate than cost of merchandise sold. So again, getting that uh, denominator growing super fast and the target for this company was 40 to 41 percent so that was our second step so we're saying are we good or bad well rounded up we're at 40 but we're still not doing well so they really do need to do something in order to try to um, improve their gross margin percentage. 
So now we're to the second ratio and profitability analysis called operating margin. And it is income from operations as a percent of net sales. So starting to notice that profitability is always as a percent of net sales. So we're trying to see how we do relative to that. It says that this one is used by investors to determine how effective a business is at earning a profit from its normal operations. So what they're saying there is this is one that uh, investors use to compare one company to another company a lot. So managers within the business don't get focused on this hardly at all. They look at that gross margin like we were talking about because that helps them try to look for product costs, whether or not um, they're keeping costs down or growing sales at a quicker rate than our cost of merchandise sold. So operating margin is looking after everything that's been done operationally in the business, um, how they're doing. So let's talk about that for this company. So again, income from operations, net sales. In my notes, I would make sure I know that comes from the income statement. And uh, what this is saying is 18.5% operating margin for each dollar of sales that they have. They're earning 18.5 cents in operating income. And that operating income is to cover the other revenue and expense taxes and the profit that you're desiring to get. So um, as opposed to gross mar margin, which also had to cover operating expenses. This one is after operating expenses are taken out. So the target for this company was 18 to 22 percent, and you can see that they're barely in there. Um, so they again are probably going to want to try to grow net sales quicker than related costs for operating expenses, try to cut some salaries, do some things like that possibly, and still generate at least the same level of sales. The third profitability analysis that we would do would be the rate earned on average total investments. And as the title kind of says, rate is net income. The rate earned is the same as net income on average total assets. And it's also called ROA. Uh, and it's trying to show you how well a business is using its assets to earn income. So it's comparing this rate really ultimately with um, other rates of return on alternative investments they have. So they can use their cash to, you know, buy stocks, buy government bonds, buy supplies, um, pay employees, pay higher rent. But this one's trying to say what on their average assets of the things they did buy, what return are they getting? And they want that to be better than the alternative investment of putting it in stocks or people or whatever. So the target for this company, sorry, I need to go through the calculation. How to calculate it first. So to get the average total assets, I take the beginning of the year and the end of the year total, and I divide them by two to get an average. And then I take net income divided by that average that I had to get the rate of return. And this one's at 13.5%. And they went ahead and showed it on this slide as well. This is the current year, and then this is the um, previous year. And you can see that their target is 13 to 13.4%. So they have done a good job. It's favorable. Um, the only thing they could do is earn more net income with the same amount of assets, or they could um, earn the same net income but get rid of some assets, so have fewer assets. That would improve the ratio. So then the fifth, the fourth one, sorry, the fourth one that we're going to look at is the return on um, average stockholders' equity. So. This is one that investors are using to compare businesses, again, to determine whether they want to invest in your business or someone else's. And rate earned, again, tells me net income. Net income divided by average stockholders' equity is what this calculation is going to be. And again, we're showing how to do this calculation here. And 
to get the average equity, you take the beginning of the year and the end of the year, add them together and divide by two, and then take net income divided by that, and we get 20.1. And uh, when we're looking at that, we're saying that they're getting for every um, dollar of equity, they're earning 20.1 cents in the current year. And they were earning 27.2, so it's declined from that. The industry standard for this company, they said, was 13%. Uh, so we're doing better than the industry standard if we're comp getting compared against someone else. But we need to do better uh, because of our trend issue, which is it's going down. So we can earn more net income with the same stockholders' equity or we can earn, sorry, earn more income with, with the same, or we can earn the same net income with using less stockholders' equity, so shares out there, etc. And then the final one is free cash flow. And free cash flow um, is really trying to determine if, we can pay bills by their due date to avoid taking out short-term loans. And cash flow is important, as you can see, to nearly everyone um, out there. So free cash flow measures equal to cash flows from operations that we talked about on the statement of cash flow, less cash used for capital expenditures. And capital expenditures, CapEx, um, in case you didn't know, it's purchases of long-term assets, so plant assets, equipment, computers, buildings, land, things like that. So looking at the calculation for this company in our book, um, the cash flow from operating activities and capital expenders, expenditures, both those numbers come from the statement of cash flow. I'd make sure I know that. And once they calculated this for their two years, you see that it is negative, which gives me a sad, sad face. It means they've used more cash for purchasing equipment and computers and all those things than they're generating from their normal operations. So this is their expenditures to get assets and to operate. It is considerably more than what they're bringing in from the actual operations happening. So negative is not a good thing. Um, but to try to take a positive, it's getting better, right? So it was a negative 72 grand and now they're only at a negative 12 grand. So they are closing the gap. If they want to try to increase cash flow, that numerator, um, they could issue some bonds and get some cash, it could sell some stock and get some cash, so they could do some steps if this is an important um, measure for them. And that wraps up all of our prof profitability analysis. So again, there's five different ones that we looked at. We looked at gross margin, we looked at operating margins, rate of return on average assets, rate of earned on um, average equity, and then the free cash flow.